Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to an episode of the Venom Vlog. And today I have a good friend, longtime viewer of the show and longtime friend of the channel and mine. This is Eddie Mullet. Eddie, say hello to everybody. What's up? <laughs> and uh, thank you for coming back, man. I appreciate it. I know we all have you know, a lot going on in, in, in our lives and stuff. And it, it means a lot. Every time I reach out to you and you're like, yeah, dude, I'd love to do that. I, I get jazzed up and I actually have people that request that you be on here more. Uh, I don't know if I ever told you that. I um, question their judgment already. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they got great judgment because I love having you and I love geeking out with you. So thank you for being here today, man. And uh, what we're going to get into today is Carnage. Uh, we're going to first talk a little bit about Carnage Forever, which was a one shot that came out by Rom V, Philip Kennedy Johnson, David McLeany, I think, did a short story in there. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about who worked on those those stories. And then we're going to dive into the main monthly Carnage book that was started by Rom V. And we're going to talk just about issues 1 through 10. Because for those who don't know, Rom V has left the book as of issue 11. But he will be coming back with a new monthly series called Web of Carnage later this year. And we're going to get into all that and speculate some at the end with Eddie here. So, Eddie, if you're ready, man, you ready to talk about Carnage Forever? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so Carnage Forever was this one shot that I actually skipped when it first came out because I thought it was going to lead to nowhere. I, I thought it was just a quick celebration of 30 years of Carnage. And then I was like, yeah, that's cool. Um, it, whatever, because a lot of those tribute books, I don't really like too much. But little did I know that it was actually not only going to set up a new monthly, but set up a new status quo for the character, which I, I didn't expect them to do. So um, but I should have. So with Carnage Forever, we had a short story in there by Rom V. We have a, a short of, of like Carnage kind of breaking out of a, a prison type scenario. Then we have a short story with uh, from Philip Kennedy Johnson with this little girl who's like hanging outside of St. Estes. And then another story with David McLeany with a little boy who or young man who is going to jail and he wants Carnage to help him deal with some bullies. So out of those three stories, like did any of these kind of jump out at you? Did you like any of them? Do you have any opinions about them? I yeah I've, I was the same way I just figured it was a a quick cover cash grab or they can add a title to which I, you know I, I I bought all the covers too I think I did a really good <laughs> Bagley cover for it that uh, I think the Carnage face one if it's an issue I'm remembering mm -hmm. I, I I think I like the little girl one the best I mean that the bully one was kind of funny but I think the little girl one was actually surprisingly the, I think the best one it seemed like the the more serious of the the stories. Yeah, definitely. It was like um, it had this like it was weird because it starts off and there's like this guy who's walking by and he sees a little girl coloring on the sidewalk. And it's just kind of like this innocent like, hey, what's up, little girl? And he sees her every day when he's like delivering mail or whatever he's doing. And and then one day he just doesn't see her and he's wondering what's going on. And she, you find out she kind of has a broken home. She lives in this place where I think her parents or her guardians are, are, are addicted to drugs. And uh, and then she ends up finding the carnage symbiote and unleashing <laughs> a whole lot of horrible crap uh skinning the dog killing her parents like it, it gets really brutal and then she sees the guy again and there's a twist with him it uh, turns out he was a guy that uh helped burn down saint estes or something like that or had some connection to that yeah it has like a kind of like a film festival story kind of vibe with like a horror genre at the end which kind of I, I typically wouldn't think i'd like some of that but I, I i think that was like the best the one that stood out the most to me was I agree. And it, it turns out it kind of sets up like something. I, it seems like a, just a fun standalone story that has no connection to anything. Um, but then it kind of sets up where Cletus Cassidy is. And, and we're going to get into that later on uh, as we dive into the book. But yeah, the one with the bully, I was like, yeah, it was okay. The art was pretty good. Ron Lim did the art. Uh, Michelini wrote it. Edgar Salazar was the artist on, on the story we were just talking about with the little girl. And Salvador LaRocca, who I'm a big fan of, he did the story where it was essentially the carnage symbiote breaking out and there's uh someone in a, a jail cell who's like hey uh i get it you want me to be your new host and and carnage the symbiote no cletus with him is like no nah, that's not really what i want and and you find out that the prisoner is hydro man and that cletus or, or carnage i should say has plans for hydro man and he's gonna he abducts him and that leads into the main book so i thought that was neat because i i didn't see that coming i was like oh that's morris like holy cow i, I didn't even know uh, yeah they, i i like Hydro Man, I, I either from the those amazing Spider Man runs back in the day, or from the the nineties cartoon. He had such a big role in that that show, which like came out of nowhere for Spidey villains. But oh yeah, I feel so bad, like knowing what's coming up for poor old Hydro Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's one of those 
dopey characters that they they kind of don't know what to do with a lot of times. Um, but yeah, in the cartoon, he was like an ex ex boyfriend of Mary Jane's or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was something add a little depth to him. So uh, so yeah, all right. So that was you know Carnage Forever, and yeah, it's just a cool one shot, thirty two pages. You know, nothing major, but I'm glad I went back and got it. Luckily, they they included it in the trade paperback for volume one of Carnage uh, because that's how I ended up reading it. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad this is in here because it actually does tie in in a way. So where does this story start? Because once we get into the Rom V monthly, which you have artists Francisco Mana and Roger Antonio, and hopefully I'm not butchering their names. Both of them, I thought, I think the art on this book is really solid. And I don't know if you, you feel the same. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I love the story and the art, which is for I, I'm I'm hard to please <laughs> as I get older and read these stories. But yeah, I was blown away. I was like, man, this like awesome. I I don't have a lot of bad things to pick out about this entire series. But yeah, the art was like really on point. Yeah, I agree. And and some of these newer artists that have been popping up over the last like five years that I I miss, and then they get on a book that I collect, like you know Moon Knight or or Venom, and then I'm like, oh crap! Like I, man, I need to go back and find some more of their stuff because uh, it's just this. This book looks really good. And where it kind of starts off is it starts off like um almost like a seven type storyline where you have a, a detective named John Shade, which is so comic booky, that name. Um it's like so in a like, good way. In yeah, a good no, way. in a very That's good it. way. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's like a, a cool, like pulpy 80s, you know, seven or maybe even pulpy like 50s, but with a little bit of an 80s spin to it. Um mm -hmm. but uh you have him hunting down this serial killer called the artist, who we later find out is named Kenneth Neely. And that's kind of the setup is that you're like, all right, you have this cop and he's after a serial, serial killer. So it starts off a little bit like seven or a movie that I talk about sometimes. It's not a great movie, but most people don't know it. So I'd love to see if you do. I think it was called resurrection. And uh, I want to say Christopher Lambert was in it as the cop uh, or someone like, like him. And uh, they're trying to stop a serial killer. He's going around killing certain men, and rebuilding the body of Jesus Christ out of their body parts. I uh, definitely have not saw that. <laughs> it, it is a weird and not a good movie. The acting's not great in it or anything like that, but it's such a wild premise. Um, yes. And, uh, and this kind of, it starts off like seven and then it starts becoming like resurrection. And then it turns into like, I don't know, like it becomes like a big cosmic thing, but it, it felt like a natural growth. And to me, at least not like if some of it's forced for time, I think, because they're like, we got to get this done in like so many issues. But they I at least like the journey of like, OK, we're, it's a serial killer story. We've seen this done with Carnage. And then by issue four or five, you're in uh, uh, Svidelheim or whatever from the Dark Elves. And you're like, yeah. holy shit. So starting off the book, like or like get, give me your opinion on that. What, what do you think of that growth? So uh, I, I know it, it. I'm pretty sure I know where they where they came from, and I'll, I'll get to it. But like reading this story right away, I was like, this. It was such a breath of fresh air coming from all the galactic and outer space and gods and that. It I I loved it. Like first issue, I was like, I'm in. I'm hooked. This is awesome. I didn't even care that Cletus wasn't in it. Which, I mean, there's only one, you know, host for. For us old Cindy fans, it's for Carnage. It's, it's Cletus. I was—I didn't even care. I was like, "This is good. It's different." And I'm pretty sure they got a lot of these, like the beats of the story from the beginning. It, it's like—it's a lot of it's from uh, Dexter. It, I don't oh, know if yeah. you're familiar with it. For sure. Uh, with Tom Hanks, the I think it's the season with Tom Hanks as kid where he's putting like the bugs and people. And yes. They were. They were doing that's what it reminded me of, and and that was before Dexter. I mean, Dex, Dexter's best season was the first couple, but. Uh, but that's a lot of that reminded me of the whole Dexter serial killer vibe, which I, I, I love that series until like the, the last, like not the new last one, but the original <laughs> right. last one. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. One of those many shows that just sadly ends on a terrible note. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're right. Cause there's a scene where they find the artist next victim, uh, shade and his partner Boone or a superior, uh, detective Boone. And they find, um, uh, they find this body and he's like, no, wait, what's going on and the belly of the body's moving and then it yeah. just rips open and all these butterflies come out and you're just mm -hmm. like, God, and it's drawn so disgustingly. <laughs> like, yeah. like it's, it's really good. It look it, like it's drawn like an indie horror comic. 
at mm-hmm. times, which uh, which I got to give Marvel the balls for doing that in in a in a book like this because it, it's gross. It's you know how it, it's drawn, how everyone complains that Carnage wasn't wasn't done in the movie. Which, right. It's probably the most, aside from those one shots, uh, the most gruesome that he's ever been. Like, well, a, not even it wasn't even Carnage. That that's been. It's probably about the most gruesome there's been in a Carnage comic since those couple nineties. One the. Uh, wonderful yeah. life and uh, mind bomb mind bomb mind bomb yeah yeah you're right because those were both mature rated books and uh or one of them i think was and uh i don't think this was though right right i'm pretty sure it's a teen you might be right because like the, they do hide things in like like the, the mm-hmm. inks on it are heavy so you can't like make out the details of the skin splitting open but you do get the effect of oh the butterflies are coming out of the person's yeah. stomach yeah it's and just it's like, like how you can make good horror Without right. you know showing dismemberment in that, it, without right. like, graphically showing it, so yeah, I, I think it did a nice. It's done a nice job. Yeah, and and that's what they're doing at the beginning of this book is they're they're setting up. Like I said, it's it's J- John Shade looking for the artist, and then the artist, he's purposely taking these victims because he wants to get the attention of Carnage. Uh, he knows somewhere out there the symbiote still exists. It's without Cletus, and he wants to be the new host of carnage and uh and john shade wants to stop the killer but once he finds out the carnage symbiote's involved he then wants to stop carnage as well and there's some great role reversal that we're going to get into because uh because it's this is not a clear-cut story of good guys and bad guys which i like um i feel like all these characters have a little bit of depth to them that i wasn't expecting in the first two or three issues um but i don't know I re- what, what, yeah i remember my first thoughts after the first couple of issues i was like there's no way carnage is going to want to be the host of the artist and that's yeah, the thing sure. i was like i was sure. like that's like he's like the you know the MacGuffin or whatever what i did think originally when it happened is that somehow the artist is going to trick the symbiote into forcing him to bond with them okay. which we never got to but i i did kind of think maybe something was like i like john shade a lot i liked him you know it's seem like a flawed you know going back to the same things that makes eddie so appealing a flawed not perfect character that's just trying to do right what he thinks is right so i i don't think i necessarily saw him getting where he gets to in the story uh without jumping too far ahead but i i thought for sure that they weren't gonna he wasn't gonna like fully bond with car the artist wasn't gonna fully bond with carnage right yeah, I felt like that too. It, it it is pretty obvious. You're like, okay, he's he's too much of a tryhard, <laughs> like yeah, uh, you know, yeah. and and so you don't really root for him to bond to Carnage because you're like, ah, eh, he's like a Weasley, you know, killer type, you know, and, and you kind of don't you don't want to see him as the new host. And the good thing about the book is that it doesn't it it does it's like it 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 doesn't give the him the host role. Um, but it I thought it was just gonna kill him. I was just like, ah, eh, at some point the Carnage dude's just gonna go, ah, eh, I led you here and you're dead. Um, and he tried to kill him a few times because like, as I said, it starts off the first few issues when we're on earth, we're, we're doing a serial killer story. You have Hydra man who's been captured by Cletus and he or carnage. I keep doing that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know. It's... I, yeah. It's hard because they were one, but right. what's neat about this book is that's different now. And, and I kind of like that. So, so carnage uses, you know, he goes in with the symbiote into the DNA strands of Morris of Hydra man. And he's like, you know, it's a shame, Morris. You never really knew how powerful you were. And he goes, you know, with these, you could have done so much. If you weren't just like a big oaf, you could have probably been a real threat with these powers. He's like, so I'm going to go in and take what I need from you and enhance my abilities since I'm just a symbiote now. And he takes a piece of Hydra-Man DNA and and deconstructs it and rebuilds it inside of him as a symbiote to kind of amp him up and give him like a solid form. Um, And he's still got the spiral on his head, Carnage does. Uh, but then he goes and gets the spot, which I was like, really, I was like, this is awesome. Um, what did you, what were your kind of thoughts on that part of the story where he takes Neely to go capture the spot and then what he does to the spot, which was awesome. Yeah. It, it almost like cemented it. It's like Rom definitely watched the Spider-Man, the 90 Spider-Man show <laughs> to pick, to pick these two. Like, cause they had, I, the, I love the spot episode. I, I, I didn't read him. I didn't, my first experience with the spot was from that cartoon. And I was like, mm. he's, he's like, like both of these two characters that are typically jokes, crooks, but they do have like really like creepy. I mean, 
Spock could be portrayed really creepy. Like yeah. he could be like a peeping Tom or, you know, a lot of do, creepy things, yeah, yeah. And like Hydro man could, yeah. Like how, uh, the symbiotes like told him, he's like, you, you're so dumb because you could do so much. Like you take water out of everything. He can yeah. kill things instantly. And like, I was like, Oh wow. I guess I never thought about how powerful either of these two are, but yeah, he like dissects them and it's just brutal. And it, it's really good. Yeah, and he 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 mentally dissects them, and then physically, because like when he tears Hydra Man apart, you know Hydra Man's still gonna come back. He's made of water, but same with the spot. Like he rips the spot like into millions of pieces, and the spot's like, well, I can still come back. Like I have the spot dimension, and he's like, yeah, but that's okay. He's like, I don't care if you come back. I got what I wanted, and he took whatever DNA from that dimension that the spot exists in, and he and he tethered it to himself. And in that process, cut Neely's hand off. So now we have like a Star Wars moment <laughs> where, yeah. or an Evil Dead moment where uh, Neely, the artist, the serial killer, has no hand. And this begins, I feel, his his journey to where he ends up by the end of this book. Um, yeah, he, there's a point where he seems to... I, I liked him more in the beginning than the further we go on. He seems to become kind of like like a sniveling, like, ugh, I don't know. I, sure. not, not, I don't know. I just, I liked him before when he, when he seemed a little more tw as twisted or, or but maybe that that's the point is they're, that they're trying to show that, yeah, you're I guess you think you're bad, but you're not as bad as, yeah, you know, there's the always a better bad. guy. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Maybe that's what their point, but yeah, they, they made me like him less as they went on. I liked him as a weirdo serial killer, I guess. <laughs> Well, and who knows? Maybe he'll he'll return to that spot uh, now that we, you know, no pun intended. Now, now that he's at where where he's at the end of the book. But before we get there, so you have Carnage. It starts off the first four issues. He takes Hydra Man. He takes Spot. Uh, he's leading the detective along the way, and then he comes across this doctor named Doctor Halliday, and she was on a news, you know, uh, broadcast earlier in the book. I think in issue one or two, and she was talking about black holes and, and uh, interdimensional travel and how since the War of the Realms. Uh, you know, uh, event happened on Earth, which I was like, hey, that's nice that they're acknowledging, <laughs> you know, because I always talk about me and uh, and uh, what we did in the recent episode where I had Randy on. We were talking about how uh, what happens to New Yorkers like one week War of the Realms happens. The next week, Celestial show up the week after that symbiote show up. Like, how do you do any how do you function as a human in New York? So it was cool to see this doctor go, hey, this event happened a couple events ago. And we're studying that technology. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, <laughs> that was nice. But it also sets up Carnage and Neely to take this story from issue th uh, three, four into issue five, where it just goes right into the cosmic. Um, yeah, cosmic in a in a different way, though. Like, I was yes. shocked all this. I was like, oh, wow. Like, uh, I did not I did not foresee this going the way that it that it went it, 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 it was like it was like a hard left turn but it what it didn't bother me you know it, it, it wasn't it was cosmic with the purpose like there was a reason and and it wasn't like just just to be i mean yeah in the end he's trying to become all powerful and and kill but i don't know it seemed like he it was telling you the goals he was moving along and he was doing things it was like checking off a list it wasn't just like bam he's he, he did the thing and he's all powerful right yeah right it's not like um well like with venom i think one of our biggest complaints with that is like okay you want to do a cosmic thing or that's what donnie kate set up at the end of his run is that you have a cosmic venom and a, and a down-to-earth venom or a street level venom but what ewing has done is like all right let's bring in time travel let's bring in all this extra stuff and and let's you know let's make it not convoluted because i'm sure he has a plan um, but it's still like, I don't know, it just feels a little, it doesn't feel fitting and organic to the story. Uh, whereas this, like you said, Carnage has a checklist and he has a goal. And his goal is basically like, he even says it, he goes, there was a point during Absolute Carnage where he was like, okay, Eddie, or Eddie, <laughs> he's like, all right, Cletus, let's, let's take this ability we're getting. Let's be collecting all these codices and stuff. And let's actually become a God killer. Like, let's, let's be actual carnage to the universe and he says he goes you know and cletus at the last second turned from that path and said no let's serve null and let's do this and the suit was like what the f like no let's keep going this way and i kind of like that little bit of dialogue between like him you know recollecting that moment 
where there was a fork in the road with them because it does help you understand the mission this suit is on now um, and why he uses this portal to go to uh, Svartalheim, which is where the dark elves are from, uh, you know, um, Malekith in particular. Yeah, he has like a line of dialogue when he's talking to the uh, the artist at the beginning where he's like, we like tasted the power of a god and we liked it or something along it was a really sure. good line right. and that that's like boom there's your there's your purpose right he's craving more so that yeah I, that right. was a really good good line and it, it set up the why he took that left turn to go into making portals and stuff doesn't really go into i guess if i would nitpick it doesn't really like like how does he know how to do this i mean i I guess I could nitpick that because he's just because I mean he was conscious with Cletus forever and Cletus isn't exactly the brightest guy I guess. Well, I'm assuming maybe when he when he kind of absorbed uh, the blood of Doctor Ohm, uh, the spot, maybe sure. he's like, and, and then he also has Doctor Halliday who he's he's like kind of collaborating with. Um, so she, he's like, you know about this, uh, you know, opening black holes and stuff, and I can open black holes. So help me get to this destination and I'll, you know, I'll let you live or whatever he promises her. Um, I, that could be a good no prize. I'll, I'll, uh... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I'm reaching a little bit there. Yeah, no, I, I know. I know. Yeah. It's just one of those little things that you don't like to have to jump to conclusions on plot points. Sure. I'll but, get it. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. I hear you. And I mean, it's like, I go back and forth cause sometimes I don't, I'm like, I don't want to be spoon fed, but yeah. I also don't want to be sitting there like, winning no prizes either right, <laughs> it's like right. fi find the middle ground um but yeah once he gets there like they bring in hella and i'll be honest that issue i think issue five or six it opens with a shot of hella and i immediately was like oh boy okay is this gonna <laughs> i was i got a little nervous uh but she disappeared for a while and they focused purely on the carnage story they did a really neat thing where he went and he was like all right they're sending out like half a dozen dark elves to kill us so uh, he leaves Neely with like a little knife behind and he's like, uh, and he's like, I'm going to leave you here. You're going to kill one elf and I'm going to go get the rest. And the, the elf he ends up fighting is also an elf with a missing hand. Um, and you get his backstory. You start connecting with that character. I it's it's like, it's really, they really lay the groundwork. I'm like, you know, I was for, like, Ooh. Yeah. I, I was like is this guy going to be the host? I was like a dark elf. I was like, this could be, this could be cool. Well, sure. nope. <laughs> nope, <laughs> no, 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 no. Cause Neely still at this point is trying to prove himself to the symbiote. Yeah. Um, and he does kind of betray, like he says with Judas, like he betrays with a kiss um, and, and, you know, kills. Although I'm, I'm not so convinced that that dark elf oh. is killed. Um, but, yeah, but he leaves him on the tree nonetheless. And, mm -hmm. uh, and along this way, like, uh, carnage has created spike. Who's like a giant, uh, symbiote dog cat thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So he's got, he's it, like, he, you know, classic. It's one carnage. of those, uh, the dire is it like a dire wolf type deal. I think, yes. uh, yeah. He takes one of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's that classic. It's funny. Like as much as carnage doesn't want to think he's like Cletus anymore, that's Cletus's thing. He would always build this surrogate family every time he attacked someone. He would always have his shriek and his doppelganger, you know, and uh, and try to rebuild his little family. Uh, when he took over that small town in like Middle America um, and Carnage, USA, like he always tries to like build this surrogate family, which I think is really interesting about that character. I'm sure the, the two of them, the Carnage and the symbiote, probably have way more similar. They think they're different. I'm sure at some point it's gonna. They're either going to clash or realize it's it's going to like oh yeah we're, we're I don't want to get into theories yet oh, let's let's, <laughs> okay. let's go on right. that. Well, yeah we'll save it for the end that's cool yeah yeah um but did during this dark elves portion like uh where they were doing the like essentially the last man standing hunting it was like a trial thing, thing that the one they were trying to get to something I, I I forget the name they were like on a run it was like a Hunger Games type deal where yes. they're like running to the to the end to get some prize and to be worthy. And then Malekith was like at the end. Yeah. It was basically like, I guess to, to either slay or kill Malekith or something along those lines. Cause he's being punished because of the war realms thing. Yeah. So that was kind of cool to see the follow up of like, Hey, whatever happened to Malekith afterwards. And it's like, well, he's hella has him strapped to a post, but that's when um, the thing that, you know, impressed carnage the most about John shade. Cause I know you like that character too. So to touch back on him, there was that moment in the early on in the first few issues where there was that portal that was like rip like Hydro Man type thing where it would rip things apart matter when it went through it. 
and John Shade jumped right in and uh, and it tore him apart and then Carnage the symbiote kind of pieced him back together and use using stitches made of the symbiote, which ended up like transferring Cletus memories into his brain or something. That that's I mean, well, because it very clearly states it's Cletus, right? It, right. That's what I, yes. I was under the impression when I was reading it at the time that Cletus's codex somehow survived and that's right. and uh yeah that that's that's what i believed but i mean as we get further into the series i'm not so sure sure like it, it could have been a, a misdirect like it, it could have been another piece of the symbiote just trying to bring john to the the symbiote well yeah as we go i'm thinking the two might not be as separate as they think they are sure <laughs> i think that's okay. where that's where this is going because yeah, it was it was talking like it, it, he said they was calling it Cletus because I mean he's like yeah because he says like what do I call you I think at some point and then yeah and he shows and, him Cletus memories of childhood memories yeah. and stuff yeah yep. yeah which you know I'm a fan of that like that's one ability the suits I feel like don't use a lot and I, I love mm-hmm. that they did in this where he's like who are you and he just shows him like Cletus pushing the grandma down the stairs you know killing <laughs> the dog like just all the the, the greatest <laughs> hits of Cletus Cassidy burning St. Estes down um all that stuff. And I was like, Oh wow. So it, it does. And he does say, he's like, yeah, you call me Cletus. And so he's even saying like, shut up, Cletus, stop telling me what to do. Um, but John, once again, after he went through that first portal and impressed the, the symbiote, he jumps through into, uh, Svartelheim or whatever, for not Fartelheim, Svartel, <laughs> SV Svartelheim. Um, right. And he jumps through and, uh, and, and chases him there. And that's, he ends up, uh, John shade, ends up teleporting near Malekith and frees him. Um, and so, and he was like, Hey, help me break out of here. And he's like, yeah, that's okay. And Malekith's like, yeah, I'll, I'll regain my energy and I'll absolutely help you break out. And man, did that not go according to plan <laughs> at all? <laughs> right. Um, what did you, were you like, the, cause that part of the thing where it's like, you got the dark elf story with Neely. I thought that was cool. Carnage building his own surrogate family again. I'm like, okay, that's familiar. But over here, that actually surprised me with uh, with John Shade and uh, and Malekith. What kind of what were your thoughts? Did you think that was going to end up differently than two teaming up? Uh, well, what ended up happening with Malekith was more surprised. I was like, oh, all right, he's going to find a way to do something somehow. And yeah, he just ends up dragging Malekith to hell. And she's like, yeah, you're not leaving. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right. Sorry. Yeah. Go back to jail. Um, no, yeah, that's. And I, I was, I like, I liked Hella's appearance in this. Like, I don't know a lot about her comic wise other than, you know, she's like the queen of hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did like her presence, like how she's just, it's a good way of an, a way to use like an omni super powerful villain right. uh, that influences the story and doesn't have to like, you know, she's playing a game, you know, she's, she's ruling her realm and, and doing it. And it, I, I just liked, I liked her appearances throughout it. And I never, I don't think I could say it. Uh, I've read a book where I was like, Oh, I liked, I liked Hela in that just because I know, I don't know read a lot of Thor, but so I, yeah, I enjoyed her appearance. She, she's great. I mean, I, I'm not a huge Thor reader, but I have right. like the, the Walt Simonson run, which was, you know, everyone told me you got to read it. It's classic. And, it's fantastic. It's actually, it lives up. It still it's like holds up to today. And um, so she's a, she's a great character when she's used well. And you're right in this one, she shows up and she's like, you know, she's talking to carnage and carnage is like, yeah, kind of telling her plan a little bit. And she's like, look, I, I don't, I don't know where you're going at the end of your story, but I know where you want to go next. And I know that that's going to cause a lot of chaos and probably an apocalypse or two. And she's like, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> she's <laughs> like, uh, actually, she's like, that doesn't disrupt my plans. I'm, I don't find you to be a threat. So I think that's going to be something that comes back and bites her in the ass later. But I like her hubris uh, and her, like her, I'm not hubris, but her arrogance where she's just right. like, she's like, she's not worried about him. And she thinks, okay, well, where you're going next. I kind of like that. You're going to go there and, and cause destruction. So be my guest. And I think she's referring to, the dwarf and then where, she, where he goes after. So, right. um, yeah. So I thought that was a cool setup and you're right. She, she's just kind of like, it's kind of like the lady who played her, Kate Blanchett who played her in the movie. She's kind of hamming it up, you know, she mm-hmm. comes in and she's just like, ah, I'm evil. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. but it works. It, it like, it works for the story. And, and you're sitting there going like, no, you, he's a, he's going to be a threat. You probably should take him out now. And she's like, <laughs> eh, I ain't worried about it. I'm, I'm the queen of this realm. No one's going to stop me. 
right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I loved all that stuff. I thought that was great. And Malekith, so tell me, what what happened to Malekith? Like, I, I want to, because, you know, we had John Shade free him, and they're it looks like they're going to get the upper hand and actually destroy Carnage. And, yeah, man, does that twist, like, they come out of nowhere. I did not expect that to happen. Yeah, it's like, he was like a guy escaping prison. He's out, he's, he's like, you see that at the, at the, the thing, you like, get ready to hop out of the, climb over the fence and get out. And it's like spotlight. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> sorry, buddy. Yeah. You ain't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Malekith is, uh, looks like he's going to get the one up on carnage and then carnage straight up like fart fogs in his mouth or something. And, uh, he like, he releases something. Cause he right, has to, like, right. Yeah. He yeah, has to, he, every he, time he takes down one of these enemies, he has to become like a part of them. Um, right. Oh, that okay. I remember. Yeah, he pulled that. There was a piece of venom in him, right? That's yeah. that was like the key that he needed is the, the codex from Venom. Right. So when Malekith, because he's even bragging, he's like, "Oh yeah, you're just a symbiote." He's like, "I twirled one of you around my fingertips during the War of the Realms." He's like, "So I'm again just arrogance." He's like, "I'm not afraid of you." And Carnage is like, "Okay, well, I'm not that same symbiote." And he surprised him with a surprise attack, goes into his mouth bleeds him out it looks like i don't i mean i doubt malik is dead for good because it's it would be weird to kill him in a carnage book uh but he does bleed out to an extent and like you said Ma uh carnage extracts the venom codex that was inside malekith when he was you know um using the symbiote during war realms right uh and then he absorbed it and now which reminded me without they didn't do it in such detail but when venom ate the carnage symbiote back in the early 2000s Man. i was so now carnage is doing that he's absorbing a venom codex <laughs> so i'm i'm it's neat i mean it's uh it's certainly showing every time he takes someone down you're like damn he, he yeah he's he's already a threat because he's carnage but this is this is not good <laughs> none of this <laughs> that he's doing is not good for anybody all um, right and so after defeating malekith and leaving you know john shade and grabbing neely and everybody and spike he leaves Svartalheim and heads into the next realm where he meets um, a dwarf who I think is Drorian. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah, I'd yeah, butcher yeah. it too. <laughs> Starts with a D. Um, and and what what's kind of his purpose there? I, I'd love to get your kind of two cents on that. Yeah. Eitri, is that the, the original creator, the guy who crafted M Mjolnir? Is that Mjolnir? the right I, yeah, I, I'm gonna botch all this Thor stuff. I know it loosely, <laughs> but I, yeah, he he could run that that Star Forge, and he can right. make you know God Killer weapons. And yeah, he has him go in there and he uses the star to to craft this this weapon, and and of course now Neely's thinking he's growing a backbone, and <laughs> he's trying to make make a plan. I didn't trust him. Still, I still didn't trust. I think the the guy's gonna be he's out for for himself i thought for sure he's gonna end up turning on the on the dwarf uh in the long run but yeah he gets him to build that the all blood which i thought was kind of cheesy but almost in a good way <laughs> sure it's a very carnage rules type <laughs> name for uh <laughs> for a weapon right for uh, a character like that and I also we haven't mentioned here. I love how like he was like bulking up with the as he's getting like the stuff. He's getting like armor on. He's looking. He's looking like like a knight almost. Yeah, like uh, that's one of the, yeah. Visually, like his uh, carnage appearance evolves quite a bit through the, every two or three mm -hmm. issues. When he gets Hydra Man, he's more liquidy, and then when he gets the spot, he starts to bulk up. And then when he gets uh, you know, Malekith, he's even bigger, and there's some black running through his red. Um, and then, like you said, he's becoming more knightish. He gets like a, a helmet and it's neat. Cause I know you're not big on the Thor stuff, but one of the things Donnie obviously brought into the Venom universe was a connection to Thor and his realm with the mm -hmm. symbiotes. Um, and so to, you know, with uh, Thor killing the Grendel way back when and stuff. So it's neat to see that they're playing on that, but they're doing it now through the bad guys because you had Eddie going through and teaming up with Thor and teaming up the Avengers and having that story. And now you have Carnage going through and teaming up with Hela and meeting Malekith. And so it's like you got the villain version. Um, so it feels like a that maybe that's why it feels a little bit more natural than jumping to a time travel story with Kang, you know, like with Venom. Yeah. Um, well, this, they they kind of like the covers for this series have been like awesome. Even just like yeah. the A covers, the, 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 is it Kendrick Lim or Kunkalim or it's yeah. Lim? I know. Uh, but 
they were almost spoilers because he had all that armor and stuff on in the beginning. And, yeah. but yeah, like you could see like the runes and stuff. I mean, they basically, they were, they were kind of telling us where they were going without even, uh, you know, before we even knew it. And, but yeah, he, he looks like badass. He's like, got all that, the, the runes and stuff kind of like, uh, uh, when Venom had that dreamstone armor yes, or when yeah. Eddie had the dreamstone yeah. stuff. A little bit like that. And he, um, I I noticed with, with the horns and stuff like that, it reminded me, like, I know, you know, not everyone's a Transformer fan, uh, but there was uh, one of the live action movies. I think it was the fourth or fifth one last night. Yeah, I think it was the fifth one. Uh, Megatron has like these ram horns that come down on either side of his face. And he, okay. looks, he yeah. looks more knight-ish and his sword is like, has like a, a pendulum at the end of it, uh, kind of shape. Um, like a crescent. And it, I remember going like, wow, that's a really radical design for Megatron. He's not really, I don't see him knight ish, but it was kind of cool. And when I saw this with uh, carnage and I'm wondering with the covers you mentioned, I wonder if they told that artist like, Hey, here's where he's going to end up design wise. So for your like nine or 10 covers, can you just draw him evolving into that over the course of the 10 covers? And that's what the covers feel like to me. Um, also, uh, he got the carnage got that armor and all that stuff in the marvel future fight game before he even got it in the comic too, in the story too they took it from the cover which is was pretty neat because usually for that game they don't release the content like alongside with the comics it's usually older stuff but yeah he had the armor in the video game before he even had it in the comic that's amazing that game is i, I don't play it anymore I, I i stopped you but you got me into it and i loved it and i played it for like three <laughs> two i played it on and off for like three years and uh I had to finally cut my, I was like, I can't, I can't anymore, but it, it is a fun, it's a really fun game. Um, but it, they're always on it. Like whenever there's a new design for someone, you know, red goblin, whoever mm -hmm. they're like, no, nah, we're going to throw it in the game. Um, and I like that. Cause if you ever just want to play those characters, um, you know, you could do it sometimes fairly cheap, but you're going to spend money no matter what though. Right. Um, sometimes you gotta spend a lot of money. Um, but with this, uh, with this, so we're talking about his ev evolution into the armor, that's what he does. He goes, he, he talks to the, the dwarf, the dwarf's like, look, you don't, you know, just leave me be, uh, you know, and the, the dwarf to be fair was trying to warn the carnage symbiote. Cause it's like in the dwarf's head, he's like, I'm going to betray the shit out of this creature. And <laughs> like, I don't, I, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm not going to do what he says. And so he sets up that he's going to create this all blood sword. But then at the last second traps the carnage symbiote and every, it looks like, Hey, we actually got it defeated. Even Neely's like, yes, we trapped it. Like, you know, and you kind of see Neely, his nuts dropping again where he's like, all right, you know what? Cause it, he was like this sniveling star scream kiss ass type where he's like, you know, jealous that the carnage suit was more interested in John shade than, than him, than Neely, the artist. And now he's like, no, like we betrayed you this, you know, I, I'm so glad we did. And then John shade shows up and he's like, what's going on. And the Cletus quote unquote Cletus symbiote in him said you know reaches out makes him form a carnage hand to touch the other symbiote when it's weakened and then the two symbiotes bond and uh, and essentially john shade becomes the new host of this souped up uh all blood carrying knight version of carnage uh <laughs> who then you know makes short work of everyone and uh, and he's about to kill neely and that's kind of where the book ends is neely has this device that he's been hanging on to uh, ready to use that actually teleports him across the universe to where he says is the, to the one person who could probably defeat carnage. And that's when we find out before we get to who that is, where issue eight is an entire issue set on earth. Um, it's actually not part of, I mean, it's part of the story, but it doesn't, it takes you out of the, the, the dark elves and, and Malekith stuff for a while and you find this kid who's like a like a YouTuber or vlogger or TikToker kid. And he's going into St. Estes and he's trying to make like a scary video like, oh, I'm in St. Estes. And and uh, he ends up getting sucked into this horrible thing where he has to like cut a piece of his face off and feed it to some some guy that's like living down there. And he's doing all these horrible things uh, just to make his way to the person who is living inside St. Estes and who is, quote unquote, in charge. And that's where uh, that's where Neely gets teleported to. So who is what's the big reveal when we get to the end? Yeah, the confu I mean, well, it's shocking reveal is that it's it's Cletus. It's like and that I, when I read it, I was like, but how is it Cletus? <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a full human Cletus Cassidy. 
Yeah, because last we saw, I think the last time we saw him, he was like a husk <laughs> of a of a of a being, right? Yeah, he was like on Venom Island. I think he was just bones or something. Um, yeah, and uh, and then was quote unquote killed for good. Uh, yes. So, so yeah, I'm I'm blown away because I was like, when they did that flashback issue, I was like, wait, what? Like, I'm confused. And then when they end the book two issues later with Neely teleporting to St. Estes standing face to face with Cletus Cassidy and Cletus just sitting there on this throne with all these bodies around him. You're like, wait, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> like what is happening? So, uh, I had that YouTuber issue was great though. I really like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, i sometimes like, there's stories like that, that jump, like they're almost like kind of like a, I guess like in a sitcom, it's all right. Like a TV show. It's kind of almost like a, a bridge between story arcs or something, but yeah, it was, it was a really good one. And, uh, yeah, nice change of pace. Cause I, the, the street level stuff just, it, it resonates more with me than, uh, cause I kind of was getting a little worn out with the, the dwarf and talk and the, and the, the, tr- the trinkets and stuff at that point. And I was really at that point in the story, I was really getting tired of Neely. I was like, this guy remember is like putting bugs inside people and stuff. And now he's like, <laughs> Snivel and I didn't like how he started to write him towards the end there. I get that he's trying to do anything to survive because that's typically right. he's like you know a, a narcissist or a you know this a serial killer like that. He's he wants to survive and but I just don't think they really portrayed him the way that he would act. I I think I thought he would have killed the dwarf and tried to prove himself once that. That's what I thought. He should just constantly be trying to prove himself, like like right. a like a an abused child almost. Uh, yeah, but and, I'm actually yeah. surprised they went the other route with him, where they're like, right. "No, we're gonna have his, we're gonna that guy who made butterflies come out of people and who was like in control of the killings that he used to cause and and like the you know the aftermath and the crime scenes. Like he was still in control, you know, even long after he left the crime scene, and uh, and they. They're, it looks like they're trying to bring him back to that point, and that'd be interesting to see someone like that. I think he could impress a Cletus Cassidy. You know, yeah. uh, Cletus might be like, "Hey, you know what? I kind of do like the cut of your jib." You know, um, so I don't know. But then again, Cletus is you know, but Cletus, like I said, he kind of looks for that surrogate family. So it's like, hey, maybe this time he'll build a serial killer family. Um, but I'm curious. I don't want to get into issues 11 and 12, but just like where this is right now, because we have a Cletus symbiote that was in John shade who is now bonded to the main carnage symbiote. And then that carnage symbiote has control, at least even if they're not fully bonded yet, but he has John shade with them. And then you have Neely on earth with a, a human Cletus Cassidy, which I don't know if it's a, a Cletus from the multiverse or if it's a Cletus from, you know, I hope they don't go that route, but um, I, I don't know how this Cletus could exist in physical human form without a symbiote. So I'm I'm really curious to see where this goes. And what I do know is that next up we have Carnage Reigns, which is the symbiote coming back to Earth to bond with the extreme biote uh, armor that Iron Man created during uh during King and Black. Um, so it, it apparently needs that for its next phase of on its checklist. So when this began, I thought during what Carnage Extreme, I yeah. thought that the carnage symbiote absorbed this the extreme bit armor but or did he just absorb the superior armor yeah i think just the superior i think um because yeah. extreme carnage that was a weird one because that was the one that had a lot of like you know something happens in one book and it didn't happen in the other kind of thing um and i really didn't like the story overall plus that was the one where it was the symbiote trying to like manipulate a politician or something and yeah it's like but eh. that's set up how he has a body that's that's True. like the body that that he's using that that's why I, I i that's i don't want to get into 11 and 12 but yeah so he's got the superior that's true you right you don't want to forget about at, that yeah at this time and uh <clears throat> well it solicits for 11 and 12 so i mean because the cover of issue 11 shows well i have i have iron. 11 and 12 i just haven't read them yet no, I know. I'm just I I because at this time when you're reading ten, there's already solicits out, so it's not right. like we're it's just, I'm just going off the cover. Sure. I was wondering because it, it's clearly an armor that that they're showing, but yeah. So at this time when at when this ends, so that there's 
I was kind of confused because I thought Cletus was in John Shade. Then there's Cletus in this other place. And right. I think it's on Earth, but I'm not sure uh, where can't, or Neely gets teleported to. Yeah, it is because I think they say St. Estes. Um, right. But I don't want to get into 11 and 12, but oh, it also okay. doesn't seem like it's Earth. So I don't know. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Um, but then also at the same time, while all this is going on, there is Carnage Symbiote inside Deadpool that's running right yeah. alongside of these <laughs> yeah there's a yes so they're def they're definitely building some carnage thing and that's why i'm th- at this point i had figured i'm like maybe they're all one and they don't know it i i don't know what because as it turns out in deadpool it cletus pops out of deadpool's chest at one point right <laughs> it starts out his arms and then it's it's deadpool but then it's or then it's then it's Cletus, but then it's not Cletus. <laughs> I know you haven't read it and we're not really talking about it, but yeah, yeah. it turns it, it it's, but at one point, Cletus's upper torso is literally coming out of Deadpool's upper torso. <laughs> so it, it is, it is quite, it, it that's, uh, the first like five issues. I, I don't, I haven't read issue six yet, but, uh, so there's something going on. Maximum Cletus. Carter. <laughs> yeah well that's that's how i'm thinking at some point this is like all it's probably all one person they're they're like their their brains are either screwed up or they're 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 not lined up in the same way they think they're separate but i think they're all probably just still one that's that's actually an interesting theory because like carnage is a really unique symbiote in the sense that he's an offspring that went straight into the bloodstream of cletus cassidy and then kind of incubated and birthed almost like a human child in a way, but connected to all the nerves and blood and bones of, of Cletus. So they are essentially one being. Um, mm-hmm. And so you're right, like splitting it up and going like, all right, we have this one that has a God complex. And we have this other one who thinks it's still kind of Cletus ish because it held, holds all of Cletus's memories. And then you have this other one that's in a physical body. And then you have one that was still left in Deadpool from their fight together. Um, so maybe that one's a little like, you know, uh, off the walls and meta or something. So, yeah, you kind of have like you could do an event called multiple carnages <laughs> um, <laughs> because, yeah. And I think that's something they're building towards because I think carnage reigns is one thing that they're working on. But then they also have another cult of carnage miniseries with misery coming out. So yeah. the fact that they call it cult of carnage misery and not just misery is interesting. And then also we have web of carnage, which Rom V He's no longer the writer of this book. We have Alex Pacnadal who's taken over with issues 11 and 12. And I think he's going to write this story until this carnage book ends, um, you know, which may go another 10 issues or so uh, depending on sales and everything. But Ram V's next chapter is going to start with a uh, web of carnage. So yeah. W- so are, is that kind of your thought is that we're going to get just carnage in a bunch of different versions. And like you said, they just, they're all one and they just, they don't know that they're one being that i mean i i don't know that's that's i guess that's my fanboy theory because i well he's he's been well also like going back to the whole bloodstream thing before they basically retconned every symbiote into doing it that was the only reason why he was able to make all these blades and stuff sure. because he was actually part of them right but now they they can all pretty much do they made them less special that way but you know he's been able to spread out to like you know he took over like that whole town in colorado so right yeah maybe because he spread his codex everywhere but i thought all those were gone when Noel came and you know got all the the symbiotes that donnie didn't forget (laughs) when (laughs) yeah well they still gotta get one in chasm Uh, there's still one inside ben riley yes yeah Uh, well that's what the so that's an interesting thing you said the the whole John Shade thing kind of reminds me of the Ben Riley uh, time when he spent inside Carnage, where he's like fighting. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fighting like you know mentally with the symbiote, not wanting to be, you know, a bloodthirsty killer. So I, I'm a big fan of uh, Spider Carnage. I love that book. Yeah. <laughs> like it's when yeah. Ben is in the room and he's like, the suit's like open the door and kill Peter Parker. And he's like, no, and he's like, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I love that series. Like uh, that to me just solidified how badass Ben is. I mean, um, yeah, 
but they also they did spider carnage that was the big final boss uh, i guess in the cartoon the animated series um mm -hmm. which, which was cool uh yeah they got to bring spider carnage back i love that character um <laughs> maybe he'll show why up. not he's he's already a killer now right so yeah might <laughs> yeah. as well you could have cat chasmage spider chasm or spider. chasm carnage <laughs> yeah exactly um yeah carnage with the ch charnage um yeah yeah uh so yeah so i i don't know i but i'm with you i actually really dug this series and, and more than i thought i would and actually i think it was you because i had a couple people that comment on the on the videos they're like ah don't rush to get to the carnage stuff i don't think you'll like it and I was like, okay, you know, I, I've given my opinion so many times that I, I'm like, yeah, people know me. Like, they know where I'm going to fall when it comes to liking or not mm -hmm. liking something. So I was really surprised. But you were like, I think you'll like it. And you were dead on. Like, I, I read this. I was like, okay, I'm intrigued. Like, I'm pulled in. I would, I would, I wish it stayed more street level. But the fact that they're playing into that, like, there is still a physical Cletus out there who's doing street level killings, like with the kid on TikTok or whatever. And then you have the, the one who wants to become a god. And then you had the one that was with the detective, and you have one on Deadpool now. And it's like, this is cool. Like, I, I'm, I'm for once actually interested in a story that's building as opposed to where, like, Venom, I just want that book to be over. Like, I'm just like, I don't care if he stays <laughs> yep. a god or if he goes back to being Eddie on Earth. I don't even care anymore. I just want this story to end with Bedlam and yeah. Meridius. Like I'm, I'm so bored now. Um, yeah. Carnage is the best symbiote book running. And uh, I, I know other people that don't read just symbiote books and they said it's the best book in Marvel, like story wise. So it's really good. I still love Moon Knight. Um, the Moon Knight consistently has been the best for me. Um, I think what Jed McKay is doing over there is, has been a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, but I do like this a lot. And, uh, and there was something else I was reading that I really that surprised me, and uh, I'm blanking on it. But yeah, there's been a couple. It's not of books. Venom. It's definitely not Venom. It's not Spider Man either. Oh my god, that no. is also awful. I just read a yeah. thing today in the solicits where they said um, issue thirty. They said is Zeb Wells' halfway point, and I'm like, okay, then. Well, then you guys have just solidified that I'm not buying the next thirty issues of Spider Man. Yeah, um, that's a shame because he did one of the really good Carnage runs, and I. Yeah, I I think there's got to be something going on where they're making these guys write within certain guidelines. You know, they're basically forced them to write certain things. It's kind of how I feel about Rom V writing on Venom when, as opposed to this whole Carnage run, because like loved every bit of Carnage, Venom. It's it's like a chore to get through. So right. yeah, I, I yeah. think I think they. Especially these bigger characters, I'm sure there's there's like guardrails. They got to stay in between them. They got to do certain. He probably gets a lot more freedom writing Carnage than what he does writing, you know, Venom, which is for some unbelievably a, a flagship title over at Marvel now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, the other book I was going to say was Ghost Rider, uh, Benjamin Piercy, but uh, but that one I don't like as much as the Ed Breeson, the previous Ghost Rider, mm -hmm. but I have been liking the current one. But what, you're right. I think sometimes they get these characters and they go, they're writing it. It's it's doing well. The book's selling well for the character. Um, they're like, oh, wow, this book, this is how much we spend on it. Probably less than it costs to make a Venom book, but they're it's it's making money. It's selling enough to where it warrants it. So they're like, all right, let's lead into an event. Let's do a crossover with Miles. Okay, if that does well, the pre-orders are pretty good on it, then let's go into the next thing. What else can we do with Carnage? Web of Carnage? Okay, here we go. Um, People where... buy Carnage. Let's put Miss Marvel in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah, because Venom, I think with Venom, they just announced like they're doing like this zero, gr like ground zero comic that's coming out with, uh, with uh, Spider-Man and Venom on the cover. And... Uh, and there's also a big event. They they mention they're like this is, that is the gonna... free comic book day book. Is that no? The one? It's it's the one after it. There's a free comic book oh. day book, and then there's one after that is it costs something, and it has Venom and Spider Man on the cover, and it's like this is the beginning of what will lead to the next big Venom event. And I'm like, oh, like just like you know, I know I do the Venom vlog, and I should be excited for content, but with the movie coming, the third movie coming out, that's all the content I need. I I really mm -hmm. wanna I really wanna cut back on like current comics because uh because i'm not liking most of them but with carnage i will stick with and because of you um i will definitely keep uh reviewing this book and, and talking about it for sure yeah it's a, it's a it's a good one i mean i just more of it <laughs> more <laughs> like it i should say more you know it it seemed it kind of took it it seems like it took a bit of a chance and it went out of the way and did something different and it's 
It's been it's been refreshing. I can't believe I like a Carnage book better than a Venom book. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I absolutely 100% agree. Well, I mean, typically, you know, these the serial killer books, they don't last because there's not a lot of depth to someone who kills. Right. You know, that with no reason. There's not a lot of depth there. Right. But they've they found a way to, to do it with supporting characters. It's ironic. Well, boy, wow, look, they, they invest in a supporting cast and they got us interested in a, a, a random crippled dark elf for a couple issues and then they killed him. <laughs> but, I, it, but yeah, that, I, I like the supporting cast. Last time I saw a really good supporting cast that I, of a book that I read was the uh, Scarlet Spider run when yeah. uh, Kane was. When Kane, Kane was this, uh, down in like Houston, Houston, Houston Texas, Houston. yeah, he had the two and, cops and the the, girl, the little girl he was yeah. protecting. Yeah, yeah, that was a great book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and good that, supporting cast, make good books. And they tell that to uh, the guys over at Spider Man because they've seemed to <laughs> forgotten mm-hmm. that. No kidding. They're just like, oh, we're going to make Spider-Man a dick to all of his friends so he has no supporting cast. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. genius, I guess. Um, or Venom. Like, Venom's... Like, they're trying, I think, with uh, with Dylan a little bit, but with uh, Eddie, he, his supporting cast is other versions of Eddie, you know, which yeah. is like... Dylan's and, not the problem. <laughs> yeah, no. D- the Dylan stuff I've been liking with him and Sleeper and everything, I'm like... It's, I'm like, yeah, this yeah. is pretty good. Like that's that's whole. It's that's the, the Eddie's plural that is the problem. <laughs> yes, yeah. And I just want that story to wrap up. It's like whatever you're yeah. gonna do with Venom in the long run, get to it faster. Um, yeah, yeah. So, dude, well, what if you could rate this out of five for the 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 uh, Carnage Forever in the first ten issues? What would you give the rating for it? I'd give it a five. Yeah, I, I gotta say yeah. it's four and a half, five for me too. It's it's really solid and the artwork helps sell it even more like man for considering mm-hmm. i haven't heard of either of these artists before this book i'm blown away just blown art away. and story i got no complaints like i had to think of things to nitpick that i yeah so yeah yeah i'm with you um awesome so if you guys are out there and you have not read carnage obviously we just talked about the first 10 issues to in in pretty good detail but please go pick it up for yourself because there's some beats and stuff we didn't talk about or go over but immerse yourself in this story like if you're a carnage fan i'm curious to hear what you think of it too and do you agree with us do you think it's a stronger book than venom i think it is by a landslide and i'm sure eddie agrees with that for sure (laughs) yeah yeah um awesome man i gotta have you back on at some point but uh obviously like you know we'll we'll touch base and and see what that is because you know when i get requests to have you on the show i'm like all right i'll i'm like i'll i'll get i'll figure out a way but i you know i also don't want to be like uh, annoying and, and be like please be on my show um oh no no i always i always try my best to make time for you so you are if i got the time i'll be here awesome well yeah and i'll check back in with you and maybe when we get more carnage stuff out like from rom v later this summer um that could be something we could dive into as well because yeah i'd love to sit and continue this saga with you because i'm having a blast like the the stuff that alex packardell is doing and carnage reigns i could probably go do that since it's a different writer and they're going to probably go in a slightly different uh direction for a little while but when it comes back to rom v i gotta i gotta have you back and we gotta talk about it yeah another summer of carnage (laughs) (laughs) i know i know i'm I'm, right now i'm trying to think of i'm trying to make new theme music and uh and intros and i'm like i need to make a summer of symbiotes intro because i'm going to be using that a lot this summer (laughs) like so many comics i I went to the store today and i counted them and i'm like god it's like 50 something comics or something yeah get get your checklist (laughs) (laughs) yeah i know yeah i know all right well i gotta go work on that now i can't go to sleep tonight um well dude thank you as always man thanks for making the time and uh and is there anywhere i can you know plug i know you normally don't but uh, i guess just in the comment section people can say hi to you yeah there's a twitter i think but yeah other than that yeah comment on my comment or whatever and i'll, well, in, in I'll your twitter are you at eddie's mullet on twitter i think so it might be like an underscore or something i don't know <laughs> okay. it's probably I'm, there's probably not any others <laughs> All right. Fair enough. I'll find it and I'll put a link down below for you guys. So you can you go. go follow him on Twitter. Um, awesome brother. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, and uh, I'll definitely have you back on in the future for sure. All right, man. Thanks. All right. And everyone who's watching, thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace. <laughs>